Yo, what's going on guys? Chris Bonnier, Overtime Athletes. Wanted to make a whiteboard video for you guys today in regards to developing a speed program. Now, I often talk to you guys um, kind of loosely about how I do a needs analysis for each of my athletes. As I say, when an athlete comes in, um, usually one of the guys, some of the guys that I work with for their particular sport, I talk to them and I usually talk to their position coach. Um, guys such as one of the baseball players I had, his dad's got a real high IQ when it comes to baseball because he played. I talk to him as well, but I try to gather as much evidence and information that I possibly can for that athlete because I want to focus on the biggest weakness. I always say add that tool to the toolbox that particular off season. So going off of that, I figured I'd make a video when it, in, in, in pertaining to speed and kind of give you guys a little bit more in-depth insight into how I were to develop a program for somebody in regards to speed and how I can continue to progress that athlete. Now, what I typically do when it comes to a needs analysis is I break the athlete down into a series of categories. These categories are strength, flexibility, mechanics, endurance, and then mental uh, strength, if you will. Um, and what I want to do is Based on that athlete, now here's where intuition and experience kicks in as a particular coach. But even if you're at a low level, I'm sure you can understand this and I'm sure that you can start utilizing this model to start developing. I think this is the first thing you need to do if you want to develop a fast sprinter or if you are a sprinter and you want to become faster. So really what I do, you see these categories down here across the bottom. What you see here to the left is one at the bottom and 10 being the highest. Basically what I'm doing is I'm grading them or I'm creating a grading scale based on these key factors because these are the limiting factors in an athlete to be able to come fast. Now, we all know that obviously genetics playing a high role in it, but this takes that out of it because what happens is I place a bar at the top and number 10 is what I define as their particular ceiling, right? So. If we want to use strength, for instance, there's athletes whose strength potential or ceiling, if you will, could be squatting six, seven hundred pounds. And there's some athletes that are never going to put that much weight on their back. So determining what that athlete's kind of capable of, I can then determine. So if I have an athlete that comes in, for example, and I know that this athlete is a 180 pound athlete. I know that his and he only squats, um, you know, let's say 200 pounds. I know he has a bigger, greater potential uh, or greater ceiling potentially. I obviously know this too when I start to work with him and see how fast he can jump up in weight. But I start to wrap my mind around what it is that I want to place the emphasis on with that particular athlete. And that off season is what I try to build up. I often talk to you guys about uh, athlete Bo that I work with. Bo came to me and he was across the board pretty low compared to where his ceiling was. But that first off season, I realized his mechanics was extremely low and he had a very high potential because of the precision he had as being a baseball player. I knew his coachability was there. So I knew that if I changed his mechanics, he would see a huge return on his overall speed. And he went out and ran a very fast 60. He cut his time down and had able to support him in the actual draft. So going on this, let's say I take a particular athlete, again, 10 being the highest potential for that particular athlete. I'll grade them where they're at. So I'll say, let's so you take a bar graph and let's say this is theirs. Let's say I get the athlete in and his, his strength is, is pretty moderate. You know, it, it could go up, um, but it, he's decent. He's probably, you know, he's a guy who's in the weight room. I might put his at a six or seven, right? So that means I have this much potential to be able to work with, right? Flexibility, let's say he comes in and he, his mom got him involved in yoga in the off season, right? Or he's been in, in yoga his whole life, right? His mom's a real tree hugger. So he comes in and he does, you know, he, he does yoga all the time. So his flexibility, which is extremely important when it comes to speed because you can limit yourself mechanically if you don't have flexibility. His flexibility is extremely high. Let's grade it at a nine. So he doesn't have that much room to work on flexibility. I'm not gonna spend my time on flexibility. He's already flexible, right? Now we go to mechanics. 
Now he's got good strength, he's got really good flexibility, but his mechanics are, are shitty. Let's grade him at a four, right? So he's got all this room to impact to make better as far as mechanics. Endurance, when I talk about endurance, I'm not talking about you know a mile run. What I'm talking about is muscular endurance. And the way you need to see that is, if he comes through a workout and he's quickly fatigued, I can then say, okay, if I can increase his overall work capacity, when he's sprinting down the, for, the court, the field, whatever it is, I know that he's not gonna start to fatigue and become inefficient. So by increasing an athlete's work capacity, which usually overall you can tend to do when you actually put them through an off-season program, you can then see benefits of that athlete. Or I might say, wow, his, his endurance as far as his torso, he starts to lose it here. I might fo focus on a little bit more time under focusing on the torso so that when he's sprinting down the field, uh, he's essentially not fatiguing at this particular muscle. So think of this as muscular endurance. So let's say this athlete in particular has moderate endurance. And then last but not least, mental. And uh, this is very intuitive because I don't do a test when it comes to this, but I can quickly tell what kind of athlete they are because usually in the first one to three sessions, I'm doing something that's going to challenge them mentally, right? So I'm gonna do something as far as when I do my GPP, I add something and I see really quickly what kind of athlete that is and who I'm working with. If he's a pussy and you know he, I give him something and he, he just he's folding under pressure or he's cutting his reps, I know his mental strength is pretty low. So let's say this athlete, because he does yoga all the time with his mom, his mental strength is pretty low. So I'm gonna put this here. So the way that I'm gonna start programming around this, just so you know, is now I can take this model and I can say what I focus on. So a lot of you coaches out there, the biggest thing is you wanna bring, you, you kinda of devise these guys through this one size fits all program and that's not the case. You need to do a needs analysis and this is kind of the deeper level thinking that I'm actually going through when I'm developing a program for each individual athlete. Even though you see all my athletes, let's say a group of baseball players all going through the same program, I know based on my chart, my needs analysis, exactly where I need that athlete. So for speed, you can de then develop a certain amount. So strength, yes, absolute strength will work on. I'll actually break it down to speed, power, and strength and actually see where that particular athlete's at. So they may need a little bit more power, or they may need a little bit more absolute strength actually moving that bar. If there's somebody who squats little but has pretty good speed, oh man, if I can get your squat from a 200 to a 400, you're gonna see that transition over to, or transfer over to you actually sprinting. Flexibility on this particular athlete, I'm not gonna touch. Remember, he's flexible as it is. He's not inhibited in his mechanics, you know, and they look pretty good. Here, as we judge with this athlete, our mock athlete, his mechanics is extremely low. What am I gonna do? I'm going to put some kind of, or program, um, a lot of repetition as far as I might do some top speed, I might do a lot of acceleration. Um, recently I was working with a combine athlete where his mechanics were extremely off, and my biggest focus was repeating that over. I think a thousand reps as fast as I possibly can. However many sessions it takes for me to hit a thousand reps on that one particular thing that I'm doing, and I devise three to seven different movements to be able to nail on that one particular thing. Remember, it's not just what you coach, it's how you coach, okay? Endurance, I know that I'm not gonna really plug in any kind of muscular endurance. I know by him coming through the off-season program, that's going to elevate. And then mental strength, I'm gonna do some things at the end or throughout the workouts to challenge him and to be able to build up his mental strength. Now, mental strength can come in the form of, you know, the jitters, the pregame jitters when he's about to race as a track athlete, or it can come as far as him in the actual weight room in his training. He just needs to get a little more mental toughness and that'll elevate all these levels. So that's my breakdown of how I develop a speed program. Um, I'll get into more in the next video of how I actually start to break down what I'm gonna do, but this allows me to know what it is that I need to implement with the athlete and focus on that off season. And like I said, from the looks of this one, I know I'm going to focus on mechanics, I know I'm going to challenge him in the workouts, and I know I'm going to build up that absolute strength. 
just like this athlete was, um, you know, just like I have with many other athletes, the mechanics, you know, typically is one of the deciding factors. If you have a track athlete that comes in and he has flawless mechanics, but he's just weak in the weight room, well, you know what to start working on. Utilize this model and you can start producing a faster sprinter, or if you're a sprinter yourself, have a clear um, understanding of yourself. Give yourself a strong audit and start developing a program around that. Hope that helps. Hot you guys next time. Yo, what's going on, fellas? Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in getting faster as an athlete, go ahead and click my advanced series right here where I provide you with free lessons to make you become faster. I'll see you inside.